Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Somiyagawa, and I'm from uh, Tokyo, but working for National Institute for Japanese Language and Linguistics called Rinjao, but my background is Egyptology and Coptic studies, especially my focus was, or uh, is, was, and is being on Coptic studies. and Coptic dictionary and uh, yeah if in front of me there's a building of the Institute for New Testament textual research ENTF and it's it's kind of mecca for the uh, New Testament uh, studies so I'm so excited to come here and yeah, also there's a Bible museum there and you can see, also see the history of the Bible and so it's a very nice place. So let's get started. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know Coptic, so I will go from very beginning. Uh, but yeah, so this is the contents of this presentation and also it has also has a hands-on session. Uh, actually, I'm not a specialist of bias in virtue in Egyptology or Coptic studies, but uh, so I what I can to teach what I can teach is uh, just to show the way to you know to do to do research in the very many very modern way, like using digital tools and so. On. I'm also working as a digital humanist, so I want to you know present how to how to study or how to learn uh, the, lang the language, especially Coptic, and how to how, how we can get to know the context of the words such as vice and virtue are used um, using. So um, yeah, let's get started. So first I will talk about my profile and the introduction to Coptic and introduction to digital humanities for Coptic studies. And then last three hands-on session of Coptic Dictionary Online, Coptic Scriptorium. So first, uh, it's my uh, profile. So I was born in Japan, but I, yeah, until MA, I studied in Japan, but I went to Göttingen in Germany and, and studied Coptic studies. And I got PhD and I went to Kansas University for postdoc and Kyoto University for assistant professor. And now I'm working for a uh, governmental institute for linguistics in Tokyo. And I got Dr. Phil Coptology from the Seminar of Egyptology and Coptic Studies at the University of Göttingen. And I studying, I'm studying late Antique Egypt, focusing on intertextuality from the Psalms in the letters of Shenute, who lived during two important periods in Christian history, namely the Council of Ephesus and the Council of Chalcedon. And I'm dealing with a large amount of, amount of Coptic and Greek literature. And I'm also working as a digital humanist. Um, we, we, including me, a team, uh, published several digital humanities books in Japanese. And I'm also publishing several papers about digital humanities in English too. And uh, in Germany, I worked and studied as a paid researcher on a five-year project of the German Research Foundation, the FG, to create a digital edition and digital corpus of Coptic literature, especially Shinut and Desa. And uh, yeah, also, um, uh, yeah, I worked as a digitizer of Coptic literature in Coptic Scriptorium. I also contributed to papari.info, papari Copto, etc. Coptic OT, et cetera. Uh, yeah, co yeah, contributed to or collaborated with Coptic OT, especially. Um, so, um, to whom who uh, to whom do, uh, do not know Coptic well, I want to talk about Coptic first. Coptic is the final stage of the ancient Egyptian language. Uh, so Egyptian, um, yeah, so there are several stages stages of Egyptian language. For example, late Egypt, old Egyptian, Middle Egyptian, late Egyptian, Demotic Egyptian, and Coptic, Coptic Egyptian. These languages or language variants are belonging to the Egyptian branch of the Afro-Asiatic language family. Uh, a project language family has, uh, for example, 
for like famous example with um like Semitic language, Semitic languages such as Arabic and Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, etc. But Coptic is um kind of relative to these languages. So uh, relative to uh, Syriac, Arabic, Hebrew, but in the different branch. So Arabic and Hebrew are belonging to a uh, Semitic language uh, branch, but Coptic is belonging to Egyptian language branch, but same within the same Afroasiatic language family. And Egyptian language, the so Coptic is the last stage of Egyptian language, and Egyptian language uh, was written in hieroglyphs, hieratics, and demotics, but uh, Coptic is an Egyptian language written in the Coptic script. And Coptic script is um, based on Greek script, 24 Greek letters, plus six to nine letters derived from the Egyptian demotic script. And but this kind of attempt was already occurred in the Ptolemaic era. Uh, attempt to write uh, Egyptian in Greek script, but it is called Old Coptic uh, from the Ptolemaic period and also Roman period. But uh, around the second and third centuries, uh, spelling became standardized, and from then on, Egyptian written in the Coptic script is called Coptic. And it has a lot of dialects, for example, Buharic, Sahidic, uh, Sabakmimic, Olicopolitan, uh, Akmimic, Payumic, etc. And but it has very uh, variable religious literature. For example, for early Christian literature or Manichaean literature or Gnostic literature, famous for famous with um, Nag Hammadi uh, manuscripts library. Uh, which are written in Sahidic with the influence of Lycopolitan or Lycopolitan for, for some texts. And Coptic uh, is not the dead language, um, although, though, um, but it is uh, not well used as a everyday language, but it has revitalization movement. In the late 19th century, the Coptic language revitalization movement began to revive Coptic as an everyday language by, for example, this guy, uh, Claudius Rabib. And as a written language, a liturgical language of the Coptic Orthodox Church, Coptic has continued to be used until the present day. Um, yeah, yeah, this kind of um, unclear record that Coptic was spoken in 17th century, but yeah, it is difficult to prove the truth of this uh, record. But yeah, at, at the latest, uh, Coptic was not used um, as a everyday language in the 18th century, but in the late 19th century, there's a Coptic revitalization movement and it is continued until today. Also, uh, in the academic world, since Champollion, uh, this guy, Jean-Francois Champollion, he's, uh, he's deciphered Egyptian hieroglyphs. And he used Coptic knowledge to decipher hieroglyphs because Coptic is the last stage of the Egyptian language. And hieroglyphs is uh, mainly used for writing Middle Egyptian, uh, another variant, a very old variant of Egyptian language. Okay, and uh, for Coptic studies or philology, written objects are the primary raw data, or the first data, and Coptic language resources are held in libraries, museums, research facilities, etc. And to verify the validity of our research, we need to see the real objects. However, until now, it's very difficult to access these materials, these objects is uh, parchment codices and so on. For example, we need to have travel expenses or we have to do negotiations with the institutions. And we have to cost time for cross reading of materials. Also, some museums take photography costs, etc. 
um, in the um, before computer, we we some institutes uh, got microfilms from museums or libraries, but microfilm is also available for some documents, but its resolution is not good enough and it's white and black, black and white. Um, so yeah, so far uh it's very difficult to yeah only um um bunch of people who can afford this and who have a good background or back good budget can access coptic manuscripts sorry uh also me i i i i studied in germany but I'm working in Japan, so it's very difficult to go uh, go to see Coptic manuscripts in Europe or Egypt. But yeah, but I I I, I can afford now, but I don't know in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, so also there are yeah, but if you are you have digitized materials uh, on their home pages or archives or databases of several museums and libraries, you can see them online. So it, this is very great uh, merit of, um, you know, digitized, um, digitized exhibitions of museums and libraries, but there are also undigitized materials. And um, yeah, I, I, for my uh, PhD research, I, um, I, I read a fragment of Coptic parchment literature produced in the 8th century in the British Library uh, that was unpublished and it could not be requested without knowing the full shelf number. And as it was a document that could not be photographed, I copied every detail of the fragment, including letter forms. And so we I took so much time for that and also I had to pay travel expenses from Göttingen to London. And uh, uh, so it's very, very tiresome, um, yeah, tiresome process. Um, so ML, he's, he reconstructed the Shenutian library, Shenutian uh, codices, uh, but I got the shelf number from his book and I requested I went to British Library and I requested to see the manuscript of this shelf number and copied and reproduced on the spot. And after that, I researched uh, based on this copying and reproduction. And it, it is the only way to confirm the correctness of the research. Uh, yeah. So it's very tough situation if it is unpublished and undigitized. But if it is digitized, uh, it's very nice. Some institutions will, uh, are, op are open or will open. They open their collections to the public using digital technologies. For example, images of raw materials in, in the very high resolution. And they can be viewed from anywhere with internet access. And anyone can point out the errors of reprinters and the research relying on the reprints should also be renewed. And this is kind of a paradigm, paradigm shift through openness with digital technology. And thus research is more accessible to non-researchers who have the time and money to visit, uh, uh, who, yeah, who cannot have the time and money to visit institutions and buy reprints. And more people doing research lower cost of access to materials and research errors can now be detected by anyone and research becomes more sophisticated and complex and one researcher can no longer handle it alone and thus uh, collaborative research teams are required even in the humanities. Uh, but um, how, yeah, I don't know uh, the background of yours, but uh, how do you uh, look at or how do you search uh, for your materials, your codices um we can use for example search engine like google or we can use cross search platform for cultural heritage for example europeana or you have special specialized databases like tris megistos especially for resources from egypt 8th 
century BCE to 8th century CE, or papyri.info if it is a documentary papyri, or uh, if it is a documentary papyrus, or the Kiprianos database, Coptic Magical Papyri, if it is a Coptic Magical Text, or a path, path uh, if it is a Coptic Literary Text, or Coptic Codex, and Coptic Scriptorium, if you want to see more linguistically annotated corpa, corpus of the text, so, and so on. So this is this environment infrastructure is getting uh, be well built and we can do we can do the initial process of the of your work using these tools and databases. And before, before digitization, a bibliograph visits a library, museum, or a research institution, and they uh, reprint the material in question, published uh, the reprint. A so called diplomatic edition, when other researchers, historians, linguists, etc., use the reprints for their research. Uh, the benefit is no need to go to the place where the material is kept and negotiate. There's no uh, need to negotiate with the institution. But disadvantages are reprints are inevitably influenced by the subjective judgment of the repri reprinting author, and human error is reflected in the reprints. And accuracy of research is compromised. So yeah, but with that digitization, we can overcome these disadvantages. Um, so the first step, probably many of you, uh, including me, uh, ask Google <laughs> where these materials are, where the con what what the content of the this material is, this text is. Uh, Google is very well known search engine and everyone can search uh, from a large corpus, large web internet. But sometimes there are too many results and you have to narrow it down. If you try to search by shelf number, you will get a lot of different results. So you have to be creative and use, uh, for example, this mark uh, for exact matches, such as um, double quotation, pivot to six, well, double quotes is Coptic for Coptic references. Uh, sorry, there's an error. But P bottom of six. If you uh, type with this uh, double quotation marks, um, you can search exact uh, literal of this uh, P bottom of six, like this window. Or European. Uh, European is utilizing. Um, IIIF, International Image Interpreter Operability Framework, across such uh, site for images of EU cultural heritage, including Coptic papyrus. So if you type papyrus, you can get these uh, results. And some are from Kunsthistorisches Museum, and some are from like Heidelberg uh, papyrus collection. And there are more than 300, 3,000 participating institutions, also a wide range of Greek, Roman, and Egyptian relations. Entries Magistos, it holds information, additional information, and digital image usage, information for a variety of documents with a focus on later antique Egyptian literature. But um, sadly, it is now paid, uh, it is now not free. You have to pay and you have to subscribe there, Entries Magistos, but it, it, it's, it's worth it. Uh, it is very well used to search for materials written in Egypt from the 8th century BC to the 8th century CE. And paths, uh, it is Coptic literary text database with the atlas, so you can see the geographic, uh, geography of their provenance, where the Coptic manuscript uh, codex was discovered, or from, came from. There are a lot of provenance here, and you can check each provenance, and you can check the information of each codex and the the information is very very well described very detailed including choir information and also publication information and so on um yeah also there are um photos uh, photo databases um digital archives available free of charge 
like Bodoma Lab, Chestability Online Collections, Digivatli from Vatican Library, Gallica from uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, Digital Baudrillard from Baudrillard Library, Heidelberg Papyrus Zamblung from Heidelberg University Library, Bear Pap from Egyptian Museum Bearing Papyrus Collection or Metropolitan Museum of Art, and many more. Um, um, interestingly, most of the websites are using IIIF. IIIF is International Image Interoperability Framework. It is uh, to facilitate the interoperability or like um, exchange of their photos or data uh, between user, user and museum or library or between library or between library and cross cross search platform, for example. Um, this is kind of very uh, great. Um, this makes very great environment for research um, or more, more open research. And um, yeah, it has, uh, most of them have uh, several triple F um, viewers such as Mirado and uh, most of them have CCBY license. Uh, if it is CCBY and C4.0, you cannot use it for commercial, but you can use it um, for non-commercial use. And, but you have to write uh, the creditor, uh, credit of this photo, for example, if it is from Bodria, Bodma Foundation, you have to write what it is from Bodma Foundation. So, um, yes. And this is TripIF. Um, TripIF is a high resolution image interoperability technology initiated by leading research libraries around the world, vibrating bringing together a variety of technologies and many famous library or museums around the world, including the British Library, the Baudrillard Library of Oxford University, and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Gallica have adapted Tripi for their digital archives. And various libraries, university libraries, and museums, art and museums, et cetera, in Japan or other countries are also adopting Tripi. Uh, it is rapidly spreading. And uh, yeah, it is using the tag across such portal, for example, Europeana and so on. Um, yeah, for Coptic, there are a lot of museums or libraries um, uh, publishing the photos of their collections um, in Tripai. For example, Bodoma Lab, it is uh, from Bodomech uh, Fondation, Fondation de Bodomech. Uh, it is uh, it is actually parchment, but uh, it is called it is called papyri here. Um, yeah, this is a famous uh, paleo paleo Theban dialect uh, parchment codex. Uh, it has uh, proverbs from the Old Testament. It's from uh, third to fourth century, I think. Um, it has a Coptic text, but there are several letters which are not in usual Coptic, like this letter or uh, um, could not find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, like this letter, for example. Yeah, these are for, from Demotic. Um, but not to use, not 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 be con. They are not. They will not continue to be used. But they are used in this manuscript, Paleotheban, dialect of Coptic. Or you can see Chestability online collection, um, like Maniki and Kefalaya, um, the teachings of money well well kind of structured teaching of money uh, are are written inside this um, manuscript uh, what is it uh, it was digital library <laughs> sorry uh, WT. online collection WT online collection home yes Explore online. You can see Arabic collection, Armenian collection, Vivica Papali collection, Burmese collection, 
in copy collection, but the Maniki and copy collection are not here. <laughs> it's just papyrus collection, Maniki and papyrus collection are here. It's a bit funny category, but it's very nice that they are publishing almost all the Manikian Copti collection. Yeah, there's a Manikian Kefalaya, folio from the Manikian Kefalaya. But this this uh, codex is, this text is very, very uh, deteriorated, so it's very difficult to read, but somehow you can read. Uh, like, like Ju, 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 Jue or something. Um, but it, it, now, um, um, people like uh, Ian Gardner, uh, Jason Bidun, and uh, Paul Dilly are doing multi spectrum imaging for this um, papyri, and they can read somehow with using the, this cutting edge technologies. And they are publishing uh, the books uh, of transcription and translation of Manik and Kefaraya from this Chester BT library. Okay, um, and also Jijibat Lib. This is a Vatican Libraries, um, Vatican Libraries Digital Archive, and this is a uh, Bab Orient 2. And this is kind of the uh, wait a sec, yeah, multilingual parallel Bible from using uh, Syriac, Armenian. Arabic, Coptic, Syriac again, and Ge'ez. You can, see, yeah, so I'm using like normal internet or Edurom of the University of Munster. Uh, but this uh, photo is very high resolution, but you can zoom out and zoom in very quickly <laughs> or too quick. <laughs> you can also download it and you can also uh, exchange uh, this. Um, Photo using uh sorry using this um, triple F manifest and you can also put it on your website using this triple F manifest and so yeah triple F has a lot of functions so I cannot show everything but it's kind of future or very cutting edge technology which is spreading worldwide and so photos and database. This is a, sh a very, very useful for um, studying Coptic, studying Coptic texts. But um, you have to transcribe their text from the photos. But there are several uh, Coptic uh, digital humanities projects who are uh, providing Coptic texts. Uh, this is actually, the first one is not actually uh, digital humanities texts only for Coptic studies and also this is not a uh, free software not a total academic but um logos uh, bible software or accordance like bible software has a uh, coptic uh, version of the bible for example also some of them have uh, coptic texts of book of thomas or very famous coptic um, texts um, but we need some yeah we also need some linguistic analysis from here. Uh, yeah, um, for for reading it from this text, you have to annotate the linguistic uh, reading re linguistic information by yourself. But there are several um, projects which also provide the linguistic annotation. Um, in order to use the quantitative methods uh, that have been developed in corpus linguistic, I'm talking about corpus linguistic here, uh, but corpus linguistics is like linguistics, which uh, research corpuses, like corpora, and they're like um, uh, like database of texts, and you can uh, search for exact uh, context of a word and and also you can see the how the word was uh, using each sentences and so on and also you can search some several constructions of words like combinations of words and so on and it is necessary to use the digital corpus to do such a 
corpus linguistic approach. Uh, but this digital corpus must be collection of Unicode, Unicode encoded digital text of the characters written in literature. Unicode is like um, code encoding system for each, every um, writing system, including Coptic, including Romania, including Japanese, for example. Um, in the language written in the literature, transcribing the text also requires interpretation by the transcriber. So uh, it is necessary to create a corpus in, in a format that accurately conveys the detailed information of the literature as much as possible. Uh, but of course, it is inevitable to uh, to have a kind of subjection, um, like uh, subjective interpretation of the transcriber. But anyway, um, there's such a corpus which has a lot of good information or um, linguistic annotation. It is called Coptic Scriptorium. This is a project of the National Endowment for the Humanities, NEH, in the United States. And it is publicly available, a uh, much layered target corpus of Coptic language. And currently it has um, one million, but currently it is more than one million, but uh, one million tokens or words. And it has tagged, it is, these words are tagged with emmas. Emmas are like dictionary form or parts of speech, like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and morphology, where, whether this is uh, compound or not, and so on. But syntactic information, uh, for example, this is subject, object, etc. And long words information, because Coptic has a lot of Greek long words. So whether this word is coming from Greek or coming from Hebrew and so on. And bibliographic information, for example, the shelf number of the codex or like uh, verse or chapter of the text. And I'm currently, I, I have been a research member since 2014 of the Coptic Scriptorium. And why did the code in this? Ah, I got it. It is Apophthegmata Patron. Apophthegmata Um. Yeah, the presenter has been a research member since 2014, and I tagged this work corpus of base letters. And also I contributed to some technical things for Coptic translation of the Old Testament corpus and also the apophthegmata patrum uh, with morphological segmentation, lemmas, part of speech, morphology, bibliographic information, etc. Et and uh, there's an uh, umbrella project called Kelia, which is a kind of project to facilitate the collaborations uh, among Coptic DH projects. And it created, uh, developed the Coptic NLP service, but mainly developed by Amir Zedes, the leader of the, one of the leaders of the Coptic, script, Coptic Scriptorium project. And this is Career Project, a joint project of the National Endowment for the Humanities and German Research Foundation, where the presenter was a research fellow. So let's take a look at the Coptic Scriptorium. Uh, they are using ANIS. Uh, ANIS is a very great uh, multi-layered corpus uh, visualization or corpus application platform. Um, this can display TI, um, but not only TI, but ANIS, ANIS XML actually, but also Power XML too. But uh, you can also uh, convert TI into ANIS XML and so on. The other data is corpus enabling searches and statistics. And TI is kind of a global standard for data structuring and machine readability of humanities materials, humanities text. And TI is a global standard for machine readable data structure of humanities materials, text, including yeah, some orthographical errors, transcribers, interpretation, lexical information, part of a speech inf information page, column and line information, et cetera. Um, maybe you heard of it, but I don't know. If you go to some seminar of digital humanities, maybe you will uh, learn TI, I think. But it is kind of very basic for textual encoding, textual markup. And many projects are using TI and also Coptic Scriptorium are providing TI on GitHub. 
and Coptic, take a look at Coptic Scriptorium closer. It, it is multi-layered copper slip spray with anise. This is anise. And you can see Coptic text here. And there are several layers or tiers. First, it is CB. It is column break. So it is first column on the first column. And second is rank. It is a Greek cup. It is long word information, especially. Yeah, so this is Greek. So it is Greek long words. Um, this kleronome is a Greek long words. And here line break. So first line, second line, and so on. And here lemma, the dictionary form of the uh, of the of the word kyol is dictionary form is kyol, but n uh, this is a plural form of different article, but dictionary form is uh, masculine singular form p, for example, and so on. And here norm this is normalized uh, form, so it is not actual form written in written on manuscript, but uh, kind of normalized or standardized form. And orig is um, the form which is written on actual manuscript. So it has this kind of apostrophe like sign. Probably it is kind of the uh, uh, syllable divider or word divider, perhaps. And page break. So Excel is um, kind of codex number uh, according to. Um, um, uh, Corpus de Manuscripti Copti Letterali. Um, it is an uh, Italian project to uh, open the database of Coptic codices. And this is called Codex number, Monbe Excel, Monasterio Bianco, Coptic uh, White Monastery, Excel Codex, and 90, page 93. And here POS, parts of speech, so nouns, and this is punctuation, and this is article, and this is a converter, relative converter. Uh, converter is a bit difficult not notion, which can be uh, studied at the end of the semester of the introduction of to Coptic language course. And this is a past auxiliary, and this is, um, Personal, uh, uh, sorry, prefix, and this is a verb, for example, and here is function, and uh, for example, this personal prefix, uh, they, uh, subject of this verb, for example, and this auxiliary is auxiliary, for example, and also here entity. So this is this means person or this abstract thing, for example. And we also have other many really other many other tires, for example, tiers. For example, English translation, Arabic translation, and also note and chapter number. And this text has no chapter number, verse number, and so on. So this Coptic scriptorium corpus is very literary annotated so you can you can have a lot of information from this uh but too maybe too much but 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 you can search anything you want using this information so it is very very great great thing and coptic Diction online is uh, one of the products of the coptic scriptorium teams team in in the in the uh, umbrella project called Kelia, and um, you can also Coptic, uh, also um, this one was contributed by uh, Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Science very much, uh, but uh, also other teams too, um, and you can uh, search Coptic uh, word, but also you can search English word here. And this uh, Coptic Dictionary Online project was um, got they got award DH awards DH Humanities Award in two thousand nineteen. Uh, it is a winner for best DH tool or suite of tools. 
Okay. Um, yeah, probably it is too much for this, but uh, this is kind of a syntactic notion called universal dependencies and Coptic scriptorium is also providing this uh, syntactic tree. And you can, if you are used to it, you can see where the subject, where is the uh, object. For example, uh, kleronome is a verb and uh, the subject of the verb is this, u, they. The object of the verb is mentro, ment erro, yeah, kingdom or something. Uh, yeah, God's kingdom, and to mentor, and God's kingdom, economy is inherit. And uh, this is a, a relative converter, uh, past auxiliary, and the different articles. So the those who who inherit uh, God's kingdom forever, and so on. Uh, yeah, universal dependencies has. Um, 250, 45 tree banks and with 141 languages and it, uh, it think it's Coptic, of course. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm kind of historical linguist, so I'm very keen, very, I'm very keen on cop, uh, cop, corpora because uh, all historical linguistics is corpus linguistics. We cannot ask all the English speakers for grammatical judgments. But historical linguistics in this narrow sense has thus always been an extreme kind of corpus linguistics. But if you are working on religious um, studies, probably uh, text tells a lot uh, to you, more than, maybe more than pictures, more than statues, sometimes uh, more often, I think. Uh, so yeah, corpus or text corpora are very, very, very important. But this is those corpora are digitized, and you can see a lot of information from this digitized corpora. Also, um, Coptic scriptorium is from academic side, but also Copts, uh, Copt, Coptic Orthodox people are also uh, making a very great corpus. Uh, for example, this one Tasbeha. Um, Recently, it is unicodized, so you can also search um, any words in Coptic Unicode. Um, you can see that uh, mostly they have hymns and also liturgical texts, and you can see the English translation of this Coptic uh, liturgical text, and also you can see the Arabic Arabic translation too. This is very very important site, and I'm so loving it. And uh, yeah, I, I will I will skip this because uh, it is too much, uh, it's too much. Yeah, and uh, these days, um, uh, digital humanities projects uh, have a very great idea called fair fair principle. Uh, it is uh kind of just um manifesto <laughs> and or motto of their uh, projects and they must be findable by everyone they must be accessible to everyone uh, for everyone by everyone they must be interoperable by everyone every project they must be reusable um yeah through internet connected digital technologies research is not limited to researchers the general public can also browse materials inside research literature and citation of research literature and this is very important for toward um, open humanities and this uh, digital research infrastructures needs to be developed under this uh, fair principles Okay, conclusions. So open science, publishing papers and research data is widely progressing, especially in the fields of science and open access papers are also increasing in the human field of humanities and primary data in the humanities, especially in the fields of classics and Coptic studies and ancient history and so on, uh, but, uh, materials, historical documents and data archives such platforms and digital corpora that publish bibliographic materials, historical documents are increasing. Uh, for example, Europeana, Tris Magistros, so Bodoma Lab, Chester BT online collections, Ichibat Lib, and this the Corpus Coptic Scriptorium or Tasbeha. And uh, I didn't uh, introduce this, but DOI identifier for articles and research data. 
this is a uh, digital object identifier and using this uh, identifier you can uh, per almost permanently detect one uh, their literature previous literature of, uh, linked with this identifier uh, CTS is canonical tech service. It is uh, identifier for works in the ancient time, for example, including Coptic two or medieval time two. Um, this is uh, CTS identifier. It's getting also uh, very important and useful uh, for classical chapters and sections. So you can um, identify which section, which chapter, which verse of Shenute it is. Um, signifying, for example, using this CTS identifier. Okay, now this kind of, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. A more open and fair research environment for Coptic literature is needed. And there are many projects which are doing that kind of very marvelous, marvelous thing. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, sorry, it's lecture, lecture part. So now we go to hands-on session. So I heard the uh, theme of this uh, summer school is vice and virtue. So let's, uh, so if we want to search, uh, if we want to know how vice and virtue were treated in the Coptic literature, you can use Coptic dictionary online first. And you can also type vice. Sorry, the internet is very slow. <laughs> so you, you know the page, right? It is called Coptic Dictionary Online. So if you type Coptic Dictionary Online, Dictionary Online on Google, you can get this one. And this is the page. So if you type vice here, you can also search English word. Um, you can get Poneria. Poneria is in Greek um, long word. And there are many six uh, meanings. And this, uh, th this data uh, for Greek long words are uh, coming from uh, DDGLC project. It is database and dictionary of Greek long words in Coptic. It is a very awesome project, which has very detailed database of the uh, Greek Romans in Coptic. I worked as an intern for uh, for one month uh, by them at, at, at their project. And, uh, and how to read this uh, SIGRA? Um, uh, this is a SIGRA for dialect. So Coptic has several dialects. And the most um, uh, most um, kind of the dialect which has uh, the text most of the texts are is Sahidic, especially uh, from third century to tenth or eleventh century. And S means Sahidic dialect, and A is Akmimic dialect which is very southern dialect and Fayumic dialect if it's Fayumic which is direct of the Fayumic basin Fayum uh, Lake Fayum and Fayum basin and L is Ricopolitan with the dialect which was written in Manichaean text for example or some parts of Nag Hammadi codices and M is for Mesochemic or Oxyrinkite this is also uh, this is a kind of rare dialect and B is direct V, it's a very minority dialect. And S is again Sahidic, but another form. Yeah, Sahidic has a lot of varieties inside. And some some people or some scribes used this form. Pornia, Pornelia. But Pornia is a bit different word, but yeah, DGJLC says it is kind of different form of area. Hmm. And part of speech is substantial, substantive, so it's kind of nominal now. And with this, you can see some graph here. If, if you click it, you can get the correlation, co uh, co-occurrence of uh, words. 
co-occurrence means um, their occur. <laughs> it's very difficult to say, but frequent occurrence of a certain group of words. Uh, so before Poneria, he hen u to teu te te a frequently occurred. And after Poneria at MN, a uh, frequent occurred at its relative converter, M is um, a generative or accusative or linker preposition, uh, but it is um, kind of assimilated to next uh, word, beginning or the next word, and that that con beginning consonant must be la la labial consonant. Sorry, it's very too linguistic, but the, its uh, original form is N. So this is um, preposition, homogenitive, accusative, linker, and so on. So um, you can see how uh, their context, uh, frequent context of their, where this uh, Poneria word uh, occurs, occurs. So he, can, these are, he is a uh, preposition on, and he is, uh plural definite uh indefinite article who is a singular definite indefinite article I will is uh conjunction to is um feminine singular definite article tell is uh possessive article for feminine singular noun but possessor is third person plural there and te te uh, article uh te is a def demonstrative article and yeah there are many, uh, many things to uh, explain, but uh, this is how you can see their, um, their frequency co-occurrence, frequent co-occurrence uh, visually. And you can also see their frequencies in Coptic script of Copas, uh, just hovering mouse on this nine, one to nine button. And here, this connection button, you can see the top correlations. Collocation, collocation is also kind of co uh, co-occurrence, but uh, yeah, collocation means uh, the set of words which are frequently used. So Poneria A is occurred very much in the Copa, so Poneria and Kakia kind of synonym. Uh, occurred very often and so on. And here you can see the meanings. The first meaning is wickedness, malicious, and spite. And you can see the citation. It is for GGGLC. And second meaning is wickedness, again, maliciousness, again, spite, but it is attributive. Um, and the third meaning is evil deed, act of wickedness, inequality, inequity. Evil, fifth evil, sixth last, last viousness, sexual vice, fornication, and so on. And here, this word is, uh, uh, this word came from Greek, so you can click this Greek word and you can see there, compare the Greek original meaning, but state condition uh, in the Lydia and Scott on Perseus uh, Digital Library. And what else? It's sick. And you can see the actual usage of uh, this pon uh, Poneria, Poneria in Coptic Scripto, Yamakopas, for example, in Corinthians 5 or uh, summons on mercy and judgment, or apostegmata patrum, uh, sayings of uh, sayings and deeds of uh, desert fathers and mothers, anonymous now. Maybe let's say it. Uh, so if we want to see the the actual context, you can click here. Um, this is diplomatic edition, so it, there's no meaning, but it has a lot of metadata. But uh, for example, if you click, uh, wait a sec. Uh, here's this one. This work is Coptic Scriptorium Mark. So if you click here, you can see the actual 
yeah, actual um, uh, context in Coptic scripture in Copra. This is based on letters on visions. I, I think I, I annotated this one. And oops, that's not free. That's not what we know. There's Ponelia. Yeah, here into Ponelia. Ponelia is here. And it is used as, and we blame each other and not ourselves as if we, our struggle was to be against each other and not against the principalities and powers, against the world rulers of darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil. Probably evil is, yeah, I think evil is uh, Poneria. Uh, under heaven, our fight should be against them, but not against flesh and blood. Uh, pneumaticon, spirit, uh, pneumaticon and Puponeria, spiritual evil, sorry, spiritual force, uh, evil of spiritual force against evil of spiritual, uh, against, uh, sorry, against spiritual force of evil, against spiritual force of evil, and so on. And yeah, this, this is, uh, yeah, too abstract, but <laughs> difficult to, uh, compare, but, uh, this, compare it with uh, other literature, for example, Life of Longius Lucius. Uh, uh, it's too short. Maybe up of the Patrum. It's also short, but you can you can long the sentence like five to ten, for example. Yeah, you can make it big uh, context. Um, nafime, ime, nafime, ne teu energia, men teu poneria. Uh, so, uh, uh, nafime, he, uh, this na, na, it's pretty, it's a bit, I think this might is wrong, but um, anyway, ime is uh, learn, no. Uh, ah, yeah, nah, it's, I think it is, uh, it is, uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, it is a, a preterite converter. So they learned about Nays not, not um, explainable in this way. Uh, but I don't know, anyway. <laughs> Enough, but there's no context here, so I cannot judge. Um, anyway, uh, so there's a lacuna here, so I cannot judge what is enough email here, uh, what the uh, grammatical context. But, uh, yeah, there, to, to energia, power, man, and to poneria, weakness. So, this two in this um, context, it is used as weakness, but yeah, weakness, evil are synonyms. Uh, so yeah, it, it does not make any new things. <laughs> but in this way, you can just search, um, uh, search and read Coptic texts, and you know you can research um, their semantic kind of semantic map or semantic uh, semantics of the word poneria. And maybe you can see, you can find new meaning of Funeria and you should like say, or you should make a paper on that. And if it's acknowledged, maybe people use your theory. I don't know, but this is a very nice way to, you know, do some linguistic research on Coptic. So um, next, oh, finally we can see virtue. Yeah, it says uh, arete. This is also Greek wrong word. Or prokopte. This is also Greek wrong word, but it is uh, it is a uh, verb. So let's see in the noun arete. How arete is used in Coptic. Maybe you can compare uh, how arete is used in Coptic literature and also Platonic literature. Maybe it is very interesting stuff. Mm, you can see the 
or is the meaning wallet in Greek Greek words, Greek Greek language, but you can see the meanings of Coptic, uh, of Copticality. And some has uh Fayumic has very interesting form, alete u why there's u. Maybe this is plural, plural something or an, I don't know. I, I cannot uh, yeah, I cannot judge because <laughs> until I see the context. And it, it means excellence, virtue, virtue, quality, characteristic, re, laudatory praise. And let's see the context. Uh, or before that, we can see the collocation and N2. So preposition or article are usually proceeds already. Or before, after that, preposition or teru, or, or ente, take, and so on are following arete. Okay, let's see the original context. So it has 68 uh, attestation in this corpus. Uh, yeah, there are many people who are using arete. Uh, maybe let's see Bible. I think it has Bible somewhere. Oh, it probably doesn't have Bible. It's very interesting that Arete does not occur in the trans Coptic translation of the ah, yeah, there, there, has, there are some Bible, but compared with other words, their percentage or um, uh, percentage or proportion of their Bible is, I think, very low in Arete. Uh, so 23, chapter 23 of Isaiah. Um, T mem pa e u e o u an en ke ua awo na arete. Na is my virtue. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praises to grave. Probably it is. Um, Arete is praises and and mung mung I don't know in cage but graven images he says so graven images I think this is my arete arete is here he is as praise not virtue yeah this is very interesting when when uh, the arete is used as virtue or when the arete is used as uh, praise. So you can see um, some, you can, you, if you have get a rule for that, maybe it is good subject to you to write a paper. And yeah, here is Sirach. Um, see, I think this one is also praise. Oh, it has no translation. Uh, interesting. Um, Arete empek spere. Spere is friends, right? I think. Uh, sorry, no. Spere is wonder. Spere uh, is friends. Spere uh, is wonder. So you are wonders. Uh, sorry, there. Of virtue of your wonders or of praise of your wonders. I don't know which one is correct. At the Um. Sion of virtue of your wonders. Hmm. I have to read the Sirac for that. <laughs> okay. And finally, uh, Peter, second Peter, Mentif Arete with uh, his uh, virtue. Hem uh, Pefeo in his glory, man and or with his virtue. This time, I think it's virtue, but praise can be, but virtue is here, his own glory and virtue. Hmm. Yeah, but for New Testament, you have the Greek uh, original text, so you can compare which one is praise and which one is virtue uh, for Coptic arete. Okay, uh, I think that's time. So yeah, in this way, you can 
Schwartz research the lexical semantics of Coptic words, for example, bias and virtue. So thank you so much.